Aloha! Welcome to the 2022 Virtual Summit, Charting New Pathway. My name is Nina Bozeman. I'm an assistant professor of Chinese Mandarin in the Continuing Education Directorate at the Defense Language Institute in Hawaii. And it is a pleasure to be here with you for this virtual summit. The topic I will address is reassessing students' performance through games. How we assess students' performance is a topic that I feel deserves more attention. While game-based learning has gained tractions and popularity, I would like to put the challenge of language assessment front and center. How about a game-based assessment? We design learning intending to address the objectives and set standard with four C's in our mind. However, considering the level of four C's, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity in our current assessment practice, it doesn't seem to match our emphasis on them. Additionally, we use scores and grades in summative assessment to determine students' level. Seem valid and reliable, but it is not engaging. It's demoralizing and diminish motivation. So there is an alternative way to proficiency, a game-based assessment for learning. Next, I would like to walk you through some game-based assessment design with um, Microsoft OneNote, ThingLink, Boot Widgets, and Puzzle. In this design, you will see collaborative, interactive uh, gaming environment with scenario-based authentic tasks. Uh, which may take various forms, including discussion, questioning, and uh, quizzes. It's a test that your student will appreciate. While immersing in the gaming environment, you will also explore the connection between performance objectives and the assessment. I wish to deliver both through games. So, uh, the following game-based assessment has been a part of a curriculum design for intermediate to advanced course offered at Hawaii uh, Language Training Detachment at um, the Defense Language Institute. This course is aimed to increase IOR proficiency from the threshold 2 plus to solid 2 plus and above in four modalities. The first game-based assessment I'm about to show you, the review game is built with a star here, an instruction run, two escape runs, and a final escape run. Each escape run is locked on a page. Students work together in groups to meet the challenges. With each successful uh, task completion, student will receive a password to unlock the next escape room. Student open the final escape room to obtain the game's message. The topic is censoring environmental issues in China. Censoring in China is another level from no organized protest to restricted research engines, social media, and news organization, etc. In this case, the Chinese government banned most documentaries on pollution crisis, such as Under the Doom, Plastic, China. In this one no breakout virtual escape room, our students interact with a story adventure with a mission to reunite. They have to work together to save the lost pets from smog in China. 
the performance objectives for this game-based assessment are that students will comprehend the main idea and supporting details from the supplemental lessening about this issue, formulate persuasive viewpoints on proposing a new approach to discussion environmental censorship. So that's unlock the first breakout run. Let me enter the code. Students uh, will work in a group. You can see uh, there's group A, group B here. Each escape room has multiple challenges for students to complete. There are lessening tasks and call for action response that students have to complete to escape. Students will watch the video, answer the content-related questions to comprehend air pollution for the first performance objectives. Students will record uh, their response, their approach for the second performance objective, their view on conflict between censorship in, and environmental progress in China. So the next challenge is locked. Students have to complete the task at the current level to receive the clue password for, from the teacher. So the clue password for this uh, level is PM 2.5. Once students receive this, they could co go ahead and copy and paste to unlock mission next challenge, unlock. So the second breakout room. Um, as you can see, the setup of the second challenge is pretty much the same as the first one. Start with some background knowledge on this subtopic for students to read in Chinese. I put English here for the purpose of this presentation and uh, scroll down. Uh, there are more uh, background knowledges and pictures about this subtopic and keep scrolling down. You will see the video students are going to uh, watch and keep going down. There are three columns. It's the one on the left uh, is questions. The middle ones is for students to type out their answers. And uh, the right one is for teacher to check their answers and give feedback. So basically, um, two challenges plastic chinese and under the dune they have uh pretty much the same setup um the background knowledge and uh, video and three columns questions answers and uh teachers feedback okay so let's go back to the second challenge second escape room so as you can see, the setup for uh, two escape rooms are pretty much the same. But the topic is about two documentaries filmed by uh, this director, Wang Jiuliang, being banned. Students will watch his interview and answer content-related questions for the first objective to comprehend the issue. And then again, students will record their proposed approach for the second objective, their view on conflicts, conflict between censorship and environmental progress in China. So let me play a little bit. Um, so my student recorded their opinion consisting of explaining, evaluating the crisis, and building needs for change. While students are discussing, typing out their answers and recording, the teachers read and listened to their responses in real time and gave out uh, the code. We, I also gave them uh, feedback whether they're correct or not on the last column. 
So once a student receive the final message, uh, so go, go save the docs. Uh, let me copy and paste here and unlock the final room. So finally, uh, they end the game, save the lost pad, receive the final message. A happy weekend. The whole process is a perfect opportunity for gauging language skills and uh, performance. Implementing this assessment module, I saw that the game-based assessment could create a natural communication environment while students explore and interact with the challenges uh, they demonstrate their level of knowledge by completing tasks. I noticed that it fully engaged my students. They were listening attentively, taking notes, asking each other questions, seeking language support, and negotiating meanings. Students received instant feedback from the teacher. Teachers receive real-time learning outcome as a student moves through the rooms in this assessment. On MS OneNote, students and teacher go through a synchronized path. Suppose you want to learn uh, more about creating a virtual escape room. Microsoft Education Block website has free ready to use uh, modules and videos on how to design breakout games. The interface of the following game-based assessment is ThinLink. With ThinLink, we can create memorable e-learning experience that are engaging and motivating to our learners. I think it's measurability draws people's attention to this e-display space. You can embed third-party content, such as book widget like this one. Students can answer questions, and they are able to check answers. Um, they are able to check answers on the same space. You can also embed or tag YouTube, Tech Talk, or Google Classroom, Google Doc, Google Sheet, or Google Slide, even add puzzles. So the sound, image, videos, text, external links all come together to offer a multi-sensory experience for your students. Let's imagine meet and talk about some cutting edge scientific issues in various coffee shops in Taipei, in this map of popular coffee shops in Taipei, Taiwan. You will experience a simple digital escape room. In each number tag, there are open discussion with guidance designed to optimize the benefit of technology in remote learning. From here, the game has pre-recorded instructions on four levels, one, two, three, four, and four checkpoints. And the final quest to escape the room and reveal the secret code. Each level consists of ILR level two plus and higher authentic listening or reading. The performance objectives for this game-based assessment are that students will identify words and phrases related to the topic, comprehend the main ideas and supporting details, synthesize information presented in different modalities. The students will distinguish more critical concepts from less important one. Level one is reading. 
student can choose to read here or read the whole article with the external link. And they will discuss the double-edged sword of genetically modified food product. After discussion, students will go to checkpoints to review and receive points on the level. I use book widget to make the checkpoint. There are multiple answers to the question, and the student needs to distinguish more critical concepts from less important one. Student will click the envelope sign to submit their response to the teacher. Level two is lessening. This tag is embedded with add puzzle with two guided questions. So students will watch the video and discuss artificial life form from the scientific and ethical point of view. After their lesson and discussion, they'll go to the checkpoint to review and receive the point. They'll do the same, send their answer to the teacher. Level three is to read and discuss um, clone technology, its risks and its benefits. Level four is to listen, discuss and evaluate questions like, how does life arise from non-living? What are the potential and limits of artificial life? And then again, students will go to the checkpoints to review and receive points. Finally, students gather all their points, add them up from four hard tags as the game's secret code to escape the run and receive the final message. So let's go to a different room and student will find the same house symbol they made. It. Um, scientific topics are not known for being easy to comprehend and express. As you follow along with the design, you will understand that the intention is to use that serious and scientific jargons to reinforce learning by combining three modalities. Implementing this assessment module, I noticed that game-based assessment allow us to combine uh, modalities. It also fully engages my students. They're participating attentively, asking each other questions, seeking language support and negotiate meanings. The game-based assessment appropriately address the learning objectives and for students to develop their 4C skills. Uh, suppose you want to learn more about creating a virtual escape room with ThinLink. If you have an account with them, you can learn how to create a learning path uh, or a game style assessment module with ThingLink. So the game-based assessment you have experienced were made with two different interfaces, um, MS OneNote and ThingLink. Both tools are simple and user-friendly. If learning objectives are clear and tangible, we can tie them together as a package to deliver to our students for instant accomplishment. With immersive digital games, we can assess a student's capabilities as they engage, as they engage with the game and work through the challenges. Especially in the MS10 design, I acquired a real-time learning outcome and gave feedback as student progress through the assessment. 
Now I will read to you my students' comments on the evaluation. On the left, the student mentioned, "I actually kind of like these games. Maybe it's just because the class leader and I are so good at it. But it's nice because it feels like a mini quiz without the stress of an actual quiz." It's not super fun or anything like that, but it is not annoying at all, which a lot of language games are. And it is nice to shake things are up a little bit after normal class. So I'm going to read you guys the one to the right. I think adding games into the course, making the course feel even more interactive, especially in this online class setting. Uh, so we deliver、uh, our most of our course online、mm, through MS Teams. Normally, it feels as though students do not get to interact with one another too much in the online class beyond answering or asking questions from reporting news or other reports. But the games allow us to discuss what we think about the course material. With one another, and hear what others are thinking as well. It also is a fun way to add in more authentic reading and listening practices, and expose us to more materials, which pushes us our Chinese learning to grow even further. So next, I'm going to read you the one on the right button. The games are amazingly creative and fun. I think it can help shy students to get out of their comfort zone, help bond with classmates. Also, the activity helps students to be able to pair up with like-minded classmates or classmates of the same level. That way, they can feed feed off each other's answer or discussion. Let's get back to our thing.、Um, this summer summit 2022, charting new pathway. I feel like game-based assessment undoubtedly improved the learning as well as task-taking、uh, experience. The sense of working together and students' participation is. More robust and impeccable. While we integrate learning into assessment, gaming is just another layer, whether you use it or not.、Mm, that can assist you、uh, in focusing on maximizing relevancy and engagement in your class. And that brings us to the end. I hope that you enjoyed this fun journey with me. If anyone who like more informations or has questions, please feel free to contact me. I sincerely appreciate your attention today. Mahalo. Thank you.